So you've made it to Oryx and now it's time to send him over to Saturn. And so I will walk you through briefly how to do that. As in the previous encounter, you have the same four pillars. Again, as a reminder for those who haven't seen that video, the way we did it is that we did it um, basically like a PS5 or PS4 controller. We did L1, L2, R1, R2. Again, where one is closer to where he came in and two is closer to where Oryx shows up, okay? Those are the four plates. And so for the four plates, you're gonna to need to designate one person per plate to cover those plates and then two runners. One runner will be in the front area, front area being towards Oryx, the other person being in the back. So at the beginning, there'll be a bunch of ads to kill just you know to keep you busy. Then Oryx will move either right or left and he'll go to put his fist down on one particular plate. So that plate is gonna be the first plate you jump onto to activate. If you jump on too early, it'll turn red. Wait for a second for it to turn green. That's usually about the time the person has been picked that's torn. So jump onto that plate and you're immediately gonna to wanna to scan around and look for the other plate that the second person has to jump onto. So you're jumped on the first plate, the second person is gonna jump on their plate and that will create the platforms that the person who's torn will be able to jump on. The other piece of this is possible that the person who has picked torn is someone from one of the plates. So when that happens, the floater in the front or back is only gonna be one person, right, that's being torn. The person on the front or the person that's in the back will have to cover one of those plates. So again, if it's L1 that gets taken, then the person in the back will have to just make sure that they're ready to take the plate so the person that's torn can do their job. When you first jump on the plate the first time, you're gonna have ogres that are gonna show up with the drop bombs. You'll need to take these out as quickly as possible. The other thing it's gonna be is there's gonna be knights that wanna eat those bombs. You also wanna kill those as quickly as possible. Those are primarily responsibility of the person on the plates, but it can also be floaters and other people in the area that help out because some of them can be a little beefy. So for the person who's torn, again, and you look like a ghost when you're torn, who's gonna be jumping through the platforms, you basically go to the first plate, the, the plate that Oryx originally put its fist down on. You go into that and there'll be platforms that show up. You go all the way up to the end of the platform, you'll see a little buff. You grab that, you don't have to do anything with it specifically, you just run through it, and then you drop down to the floor. Basically after this, this is gonna complete three times. Now the bombs only come out, the ogres only come out once, but you'll have the same sequence where Someone will get torn, they'll have to go through. On that third portion of that, you're gonna get a buff that you have to pick up. That buff is to take out a knight that shows up from a hive tomb ship that you have to take out to be able to do anything with orcs. So go get that, come down, kill that knight, and then you'll get a ring of invisibility, like a force field that's around you. Stay basically in the center. Around the time that happens and you take that off, the people who are on the plates at that time they're gonna go get close to their bombs, right? So again, once you pick up the buff and you don't have to worry about holding the plates anymore, all the people who are covering plates are then going to go get close to their bombs. And then you're gonna look in your lower left-hand screen for something that says Oryx is summoned the darkness. When that happens, immediately have everyone go to their bombs, stand their bombs for a couple seconds. You'll know you're complete when you see your name says somebody detonated the bomb. As soon as that happens, hightail it back to the middle of the arena because again, if you don't do this quickly enough, you're gonna die. Get into the invisibility shield. At that point, that will break his shield, right? Once his shield is broken, you can do DPS. So at that point, pour in DPS, do everything you can. And that's one phase of this encounter. Once that is complete, he's gonna, Oryx is gonna do one of two revenge tactics. He's either going to drop bombs on you, and you'll know that because you'll see knights that spawn in each of the plates. If you do that, just run around the arena a lot. What we do is people just run around the plates. They're plate people. The people who are runners kind of just run around the middle, but just don't stop because the bombs will kill you. The other technique is that he's going to put a big sphere at the, at the front of the room. And in that case, everyone goes to the front and you try to kill the ads that are coming from the right and left. The reason for that is those ads are going to go in that sphere and mess up the team that's in there. One by one, he's going to take one person out of the main area into the sphere. And your job is to basically kill this shade of Oryx that's going around, that'll warp around the sides. You want to kill him because eventually what he'll do is he'll come in the middle and he'll try to kill you. So you can shoot him on the outside if you see him, and then he's going to rush in. Kill him once you're done. That completes that technique. Once you're done with that, that's one phase of the encounter. So there's a total of four DPS phases that you can do. You could do this four times before you wipe as a fire team. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You're going to need to do enough DPS 
to be able to do it within four rounds. Obviously, if you do it earlier, that's better. Once you're done with this, let's say you get enough damage and you start getting damage towards the end, you'll notice that he has a last stand bar. Especially early on, what I would recommend if you have the phases still to do it, is just as you get towards that, chip him down with primary and try to get an additional phase to gather ammo. If you have ammo, if you have supers, or if you're on the fourth phase anyway, you don't have a choice. But if you could do that, what that allows you to do is do another phase of this encounter pick up additional heavy, get your supers set up and everything else, and then go for that last stand. The last stand is similar to the previous encounters. Once he hits that, he's gonna go to the front of the room. You'll see on the right and left, there are gonna be ogres that spawn that have bombs. Have someone go out immediately and kill those, but don't go in them to detonate them yet. Once Oryx decides to do his darkness attack again, you'll have the people go in, detonate those bombs, which will stun him and allow you to do DPS. Now at that point, just do everything you can because if you don't kill him, you're gonna wipe. One key is if you are st struggling with DPS is you can actually detonate one bomb first, do DPS, then shock him again with another bomb and extend your DPS. This will allow you if you don't have as much ammo, if you don't have as many supers ready, this will give you additional time to finish it. Once you finish it, that's it. That's the encounter. Again, super fun encounter. Great changes from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, and I hope this video helped you get your first clear. If it did, feel free to jump in my Discord or just put a comment in here. I'd love to hear your stories of how you got through, you know, the first couple days of Oryx and got your completion. But again, that's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.